Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, I'm Joe. In many mobile games such as Angry Bird, Clash of Clans, we will receive one classical win effect after each battle. In this episode, we are taking a look at how to make one simple click button game. After time out, we will receive one classical win effect in our project. Additionally, we will talk about how to render particle systems on the top of the UI canvas by using two cameras. As always, the link for the project repository is on the description below. You can download the starting project or completed project from my Google Drive. Also, you can read the text version of this episode on the links below. Ok, let's get into it. So just open up Unity and currently we already have something on here. For this project, I created one UI text to display the countdown timer. Also, this UI text game object represents how many coins we have in this game. Once we press the click button, we will receive one coin each time. After timeout, the result panel will appear and display how many stars we have in this level. We can run our scene and look at the game. Press the click button and try to receive more coins in 3 seconds. After time expire, we cannot press the click button again and I eventually receive 6 coins in this level. The UI canvas has a game UI script attached to it. Let's take a look at this script. We use text.text .text to display how long this level is. Once we press the click button, our coins number value will increase by 1. Inside update functions, we have created one private function called timer. As long as our timer is not timeout, our timer will be decreased by time.delTime in each frame. Once the timer is less than 0, the boolean variable is timeout is equal to be true and leave 0 seconds on the screen. Using two string f2 methods can be beneficial in lots of ways because you can display only two decimal places in float variable. After timeout, we want to display our result panel and different stars corresponding with the game standard. The first public is a game object that is called win canvas. And we have another game object variable that is called stars. To declare an array, specify its element type with square brackets. This statement declares an array of game objects. Let's bend to Unity and establish these connections. When our coins number is less than 4, we will receive 1 star. Once we receive less than 8, we will achieve 8 stars. If we receive more than 8, we will get 3 stars. Let's lock this down so it doesn't change. That little clock in the top right corner just keep the inspector window open as you click around the screen. Select these 3 stars game objects and drag them into the stars array section. Then, don't forget to unlock the lock button in the top right corner as well. We want, after timeout, our win canvas set active to be true. We can create a new function after is timeout equals to be true. In here, we use enumerator instead of private void functions because we want our stars display one by one. The execution of a coroutine can be paused at any point using the yield statement. When a yield statement is used, the coroutine will pause execution and automatically resume at the next frame. I used to type CO in the end of its name to represent this as one coroutine instead of a normal void function. Call this coroutine by using star coroutine. Once time out, first we want the win canvas set active to be true. The red line appears on here because enumerator allows to stop the process at a specified moment, return that part of object or nothing and get back to that point whenever you need it. So we can simply say yield return new with 4 seconds, 0 seconds. Now when time out, our win canvas display on the screen. If our coin's number value is less than 4, 
we want to only display our left star on the canvas. In else-if statement, once the coin's number is less than 8, we want to display the first two stars on the screen. In other words, we want to display our left and the middle star. The time interval is 1 second. In else statement, once the coin number is greater than 8, we want to display all of the stars on the screen. The time interval is 1 second. Save the script and switch back. If we enter the play mode, we can see that after we have 7 coins, our second stars display after 1 second. Nice! We can test again. This time, we click many times in order to receive max stars. Each star appear one by one. Let's have a quick to complete the restart button. We used Unity Engine dot Things Manager namespace to reload current things with Things Manager. If you go back into Unity and run our thing, although we have achieved the restart button, however, player can easily to restart the new game by clicking continuously, even the process of win effect is still running. We create another boolean variable that is called can click. After showing the final star's result, then after one second, can click boolean variable is equal to be true. Once can click variable is equal to be true, we can press the restart button and reload the current things. Now, let's take a look how to create a particle system on UI canvas. We want our stars display with one particle system, which makes this game look more cool. To create one particle system, simply right-click anywhere in the hierarchy, go to Effects, and select Particle System. Then move to the Inspector and ensure that Reset the Transform by clicking the gear icon on the Transform component and selecting Reset. You will notice that our particle system display behind our UI canvas. That's true because particle system display on the screen, while our UI canvas render mode is over layer mode, which means this render mode places UI elements on the screen rendered on the top of the screen. So, how can we display the particle systems on the top of the UI canvas? First, let's create a new camera in hierarchy and then rename it as UI camera. This camera will only focus on our UI elements. Set the clear flags option to depth only if you have more than one camera. You can use this for layering cameras. The depth is 0 and our main camera default depth value is negative 1. Go to UI camera. Set the projection option to auto graphics because we are making one 2D game instead of 3D. The cooling mask we select nothing except UI layer, so our UI camera is used to render UI parts. Go to camera game object, change the render mode from screen space over layer to screen space camera. In this render mode, the canvas is placed a given distance in front of the specified camera. The UI elements are rendered by UI camera which means that the camera affects the appearance of the UI. Drag the UI camera inside render camera places. However, the result did not work out as well as expected. The reason is that our UI camera cooling mask option has selected the UI layer, but we did not set our particle systems layer as UI as well. So go to particle system game object and change the layer as UI. Now, our particle system can be shown on the top of the UI canvas. Perfect. Finally, don't forget to reset the UI camera and the particle system transform component. You can drag this particle system as the child of the UI camera. 
or you can leave it alone as one single game object. Both of methods doesn't matter with the final result. Now we can edit our particle system. I use 2D sprite as texture and change some properties on the particle system inspector. Finally, drag this particle system as prefab and delete the particle system's game object. In this case, I drag our particle prefab as the child of each star. In order to display on the center of the star, reset its transform component. We can run our scene and look at the result. We can manually enable our first stars on the UI cameras. However, our particle system still play behind on the UI cameras because we forgot to set the sorting layer on the particle system inspector. You can create another sorting layer called UI. The rest of the UI part sorting layer is default layer. Then set the particle system render sorting layer to UI layer. The second method is changing the default sorting layer order higher than zero. Additional, you can adjust the duration for best visual effects in your game. Cool. By the way, if you want to make your game more complete, you can add more features such as saving and loading your highest scores on your project. I have published 4 methods of saving and loading data in Unity. In here, we can simply use playerpref.setInt to save our highest score, and use playerpref.getIn to load our data. If you want to know the detail, you can download the completed project from my Google Drive and check it out or you can watch my save and load playlist on my channel. Alright, this is the end of this video. If you want to see how to save and load data in this game, you can download my project from the links below. Also, you can join our server on Discord. Stay tuned for future updates from my channel. In the next video, we will talk about shadow graph and we will talk about what is UV and how to use shadow graphics to make one basic water shadow. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like it, share with friends, and subscribe to my channel. There is much more to come. I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.